Right. So this is the video that I haven't really been looking forward to making. Um, but, you know, there's, uh, there's no progress without uh, mistakes. And uh, I don't know what really the mistake is, though, in this case. So we're looking at the um, pesky Padoop programmer. So let's just go back to... So this is the original one. This is the one that's from the EEV blog forum, which I have made a couple of times, uh, if you see from previous videos. And, for instance, this is one of mine which I would call semi-successful in that I'm able to program the majority of the chips, but the one that eludes me is the the three cent microcontroller uh so that's the i think it's the pmc 150 or the pms 150 i'm not really sure but the one that's uh, uh one time programmable but everything else you know the flash versions that recognize the side consider that to be a bit of a success in that i uh, put it together myself um using you know the smd components soldering by hand so that's not bad uh, and you know, there's a couple of weird things about it like here is the capacitor here that's um, supposed to be 47 microfarad, but it's 222s, which is all I had at the time. But, you know, in general, after I think this is version, I can't remember now, 4 or 5, it actually works. Now, um, Tim from Germany, and I'll link into uh, to his work, actually sent this one. And this is one that he's been working on, uh, which is called a light version, which is... Uh, which is a delight by comparison, excepting for the fact that he's used zero, I think it's 0403 components. So it's it's lovely, but it sort of throws me off for the ability to, to do it within the uh, the confines of my skill set. So this one works perfectly, it programs all the chips and it's lovely, and I'm treating it like gold at this stage. Um, this was my redesigned, uh, I called it my old man version, so mostly through hole. Uh, a couple of things that weren't through hole was the main processor and a couple of other components like, for instance, there's a couple of MOSFETs in there, but essentially a through hole version. And uh, here's my first attempt, which um, is the subject of a video and that uh, worked in that I was able to uh, load up the firmware onto the STM32, but when I put a chip in here, it was not able to actually recognize that there was a chip there. And then I proceeded to swap out lots of components and play around with it a fair bit, but it was no joy. So back to the drawing board for version 2. And uh, again, uh, I was able to load up the firmware. That was fine. Changed a few, like these are 104 ceramics. These are 104 ceramics, but they're different. A um, few other bits and pieces that I changed. But again, same scenario, able to load up the firmware on the STM32, but not able to recognize or program a chip. And this is version three of that same, um, yeah, old man version. And this time we've got, you know, like a 47 microfarad capacitor is there. And, you know, it's all, it, sold it up fine everything was fine i did a lot of testing on this of all the components before i put them in there um i've got smd diodes here instead of through hole diodes and other bits and pieces but again i can load up the stm32 um, with the firmware but cannot recognize or program any of the chips so where does that leave us well never solved a problem by giving up and um I do want to go back and revisit this. I, I don't know why. Um, I suspect that there might be something I can do to make this work. I've been reluctant to go onto the forum and ask because, you know, they're, well, I don't know. I, I guess I could plead what Groucho Marx used to say, which is I'd never belong to a club that would have me as a member. Um, so I'm not really a forum sort of guy, actually. And um, they can be quite... What's a nice word? Um, they can be quite direct about how they deal with um, people that they don't regard as part of the fold, which I am not. So I'm going to work on this more or less by myself off to my own. I might get some help here and there. I might just keep my ear to the ground and see what I can pick up uh, to see where this could have a problem. And uh, in the meantime, what I'm going to do is take the... Uh, the old version here and uh, I'm going to go back and work on this but instead of soldering up by hand which is does have some difficulties for my old man eyes I'm going to actually uh, set this up with a stencil 
and some solder paste. I'm going to do a couple of these in an oven and see if I can't get a working version as good as Tim's, even with the old design. And uh, if that uh, works, then I'll be a happy man. It takes a little bit of the pressure off for this series here. That's the state of play. Let's get to it with the stencil. I've never done this before. And with the oven, which I've never done before. And we'll see if we can't get a working version of the older version of this Paduk programmer. All right, so you're looking at one quarter of the size of the entire packet for this stencil. So it's huge. Um, so just as a, you know, there's a 20 cent coin in there just to show you, and I could pan around, but a camera won't allow that really. Um, but it is a massive parcel. So I will um, divest the parcel of its exterior and then we'll have a look and see what's inside. Right. So inside that massive parcel is a massive frame. And um, just, you can see it again, the 20 cent coin down there. You can see the PCB that this stencil is aimed at. Okay, so there is the uh, stencil and there is the PCB. So why the large frame? No idea, never done this before. Uh, maybe it was a button I pushed when I uh, ordered the thing from PCB way. And uh, who knows? Um, but that is it. At least it looks like it. So the next thing is to uh, actually set up some solder paste. Okay, so uh, here we're looking at the oven and I taped thermocouple onto the, um, onto the tray with some Kapton tape. And uh, of course the Kapton tape, um, not being original, I guess, uh, melted straight away. Now the original uh, video sequence here went for about five minutes and I tell you what my heart was pounding all the way through I thought it was very exciting uh, but when I watched it in review uh, and uh, I had one of my collaborators sitting next to me we decided that it wasn't the most exciting uh, video so if you want to slow it down and see me going through the solder profile uh, then by all means you can slow that movie down but basically I'm trying to keep as close as I can to the uh, paste profile using a, a manual technique. This is the uh, the first attempt with the stencil, which yeah, it's actually pretty straightforward. I just put it over the top and um, I use like a paint scraper to scrape some solder paste in. Uh, this is me placing, I guess there's probably like 80% of the components uh, are on there at this stage. Uh, just a few capacitors and bits and pieces uh, missing. Uh, but yeah, again, very straightforward to solder and much, much faster at this stage anyway uh, than, than doing, the, um, doing it by hand. Here's the victim uh, ready to go into the oven. So um, yeah, uh, this is the moment of truth. And uh, again, uh, I have a, this was about a five minute sequence here where I, uh, I ramped up the, uh, the temperature to the 150 mark, uh, held it there for a while, and uh, and then ramped it up to the 220 230 mark and then let the whole thing cool down so not the most exciting uh video in the world so again i've, I've sped this uh, all the way up uh, having said that i mean my heart was uh, was pounding the whole time and uh, I, I just found the whole thing fascinating i've obviously never done this before so i just thought it was amazing uh you know three minutes or so of um of this process in the oven versus you know, an hour uh, of soldering by hand and um, for a much uh, better result, in terms, certainly in terms of the aesthetics of the, of the whole thing. So we're just reaching around 230-ish degrees now, which is the reflow um, section of that profile and uh, just holding that for 30, 40 seconds and then this is the cooling down phase. So uh, yeah, mission complete, but will it work? Uh, that's the next thing. So this is what uh, it looks like coming out of the oven and then I've just also added the, uh, the bits and pieces there like the, uh, the female headers and um, the crystal and that's it just in close up. But you know lovely and clean compared to doing it by hand and the next question is uh, will it work when we load up the firmware and try and recognize the chip. Okay so here, here comes the big test of the new one so I've uh, plugged in the programmer uh, whilst pressing the button 
so that should be able to load up the firmware so no DFU device capable so okay let's try that again uh, I have to select the USB keep forgetting to do that and uh, this looks good of course we've got to this same stage before so I'm hopeful at this stage given that the firmware is loading up fine but the real test will be whether it'll recognize not just the um, uh, the, the flash version the multi-time program version uh, but also that it will recognize the one-time program version so let's so that's the PFS154 and the PMS150. Okay, so I've plugged it back in again. I just don't know what that means. I need to also select it again. Let's do that. Yeah, looks good. All right, so now I'm going to put in, I'll put in the easy one first. That's the PFS154. And we'll do easy proc. Ah. Yep, and just probe. Ah, oh, look at that, the PFS154 is found. Okay, deep breath. Swapping over for the one-time programmer version, the one that's caused all the issues. And look at that, the ICE supported the PMS150C. So, that is very good. Looks like we've got ourselves a working programmer, folks. Um, I can definitely say that is the circuit working this time. See you next time.